Praise the Lord. 2020 congregation, I said, Praise the Lord. Happy New Year to everyone. Tell the person by your side, Happy New Year. Turn to the other side, Happy New Year. Now, on my behalf, tell somebody, Happy New Year. The Lord make this year a happy new year for you. Prosperous new year for you. Climbing up new year for you. 2020 confirmation. In the everlasting covenant for everyone. The Lord be with you. The Lord uphold you. The Lord energize you. And the Lord bless you beyond your prayer. And for those who are joining us all over the continent, all over Nigeria too, and all over on the social media, I say happy, prosperous, blessed new year for everyone in Jesus' name. Our friends, our members, and all the people who are joining us and you are connected now, I want to tell you there will be a 2020 confirmation in the everlasting covenant for everyone in Jesus' name. This year you will be new. New life. New blessing. New appearance. New joy. New victory. And you will move a lot of steps higher than before. That's old Amen. 2020 Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for the joy of the Lord, which is the strength of everyone. We're asking, oh Lord, that this year will be a special year for everyone. That your word will enrich and energize every life in Jesus' name. Do something marvelous today. Something great today. Something gracious in every life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Come be seated. We're coming to Job. Chapter 21. I'm reading from verses 1, 2, and 3. Job, chapter 21, verses 1, 2, and 3. But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolations. Suffer me, allow me, permit me, that I may speak. And after that, I have spoken, after that I have spoken, mock on. Job was talking to his friends, and he was talking to them that they needed to reconsider all the things they were saying, because they missed the point. This year, you will not miss the point. They went on a tangent. And they were trying to apply some words to Job. And Job replied to them, he said, you know what? What you are saying will not deceive me because I know where I stand. He says, you know what? All the things you are saying will not discourage me because I know where I stand. He said, you know what? Everything you say, I weigh them. I look at those things, and I look at my life, and I look at my front, I look at my future, and therefore those things to say will not distract me. And so he spoke to them, he said, Hear diligently, you talk too much, you say your mind too much, and your mind is not that profitable, and therefore suspend everything you are saying, hear me diligently and let this what I say be your consolation suffer me allow me 
permit me that I may speak after that, after that I've spoken, if you don't understand, after that I've spoken, if you don't consider, after that I've spoken, if you still will not take correction, all right, mock on. That's what he told them. Let's look at these verses and see what Job will be telling us. We're leaving all those three friends now. And we come to the new year 2020. And we're having a service that will believe there'll be a 2020 confirmation in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your profession, and in everything you desire this year in Jesus' name. Let's see now what Job is telling us. Verse 2. Hear diligently my speech. And let this, my speech, my message, my word, be your consolation. That's one. Number two. Hear diligently my speech. And let this be your comfort. During the year... As you pass through the year and you say, this is happening, that is happening, you need comfort, come back. Hear diligently my speech and let this be your comfort. Look at this. Hear my speech diligently. Give diligent attention to what I say and let this be your confidence. This year, you will walk confidently. Talk confidently. And when it appears, your confidence is going down. It go back to the word and hear diligently my speech and let this be your confidence. You see, as things happen to you, as things come to you, there will be things to consider. What are you going to consider? Are you going to consider, look at my situation? Look at all my friends? Look at my family? What am I going to do now, verse 2? Hear diligently my speech and let this be your consideration. The things you consider, you're not going to be considering what Sofa said, what Bill that said, what this other one said. Your consideration will be the word that you hear. And you hear it well, and you hear diligently, and then it says, Hear diligently my speech and let this be your confession. You'll not uh, confess what Satan is saying, what the messengers of Satan are saying. You will not confess what your enemies are saying or your enemies will become liars this year in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hear diligently my speech and let this be be your correction, your correction. You see, we give ourselves away, we betray ourselves, we destroy ourselves by the words we speak, by the words that come out of our mouth. But this new year, correct your language by the speech that you hear diligently. Correct your understanding and correct your misgivings. Hear diligently my speech and let this be your correction. Now it also says, look at verse 2 there. Hear diligently my speech and let this be your consecration. Let this be your consecration. Look at the words of Job. Hear diligently and sing diligently and let all that be your consolation. Let it be your comfort. Let it be your confidence. Let it be your consideration and let it be your confession. Let it be your correction. Let it be your consecration. Look at verse 3. He was telling them, he said, Suffer me that I may speak. You three, one, two, three, you talk, you talk, you talk. And you want to drive me into a corner. 
and you want to put all the pressure of the world on me and you think I'm the most guilty person in the whole earth you don't see anything good that I have done you don't see anything good in any of my actions you don't see anything good in my life and you all accuse me that this is coming upon you because you're a great sinner and you're a wicked man he said all right I hear you allow me to speak after that after that I've spoken if you want to keep on mocking mock on let's leave those people let's see what Job is telling us look at verse 3 there suffer me that I may speak and then after that I have spoken, move on. You are going to move on. I am moving on. After that I have spoken, move up. Anybody going to move up this year? You'll move up in Jesus' name. But you know, we move up on the basis of the word that we hear. On the basis of the 2020 message and the 2020 confession on the basis of the word that the Lord is giving us we don't mock I will not be a mocker I said I will not be a mocker I move on I move forward after that I have spoken move forward any forward march any forward move Praise the Lord. I see you forward this year in Jesus' name. It says in verse 3, Suffer me that I may speak. After that I have spoken, mock not. You will not mock the word of God. You will not mock the scriptures. You will not mock the preachers of the word. It says, Suffer me that I may speak. And after that I have spoken, meddle not you see if you're not careful you'll find all these uh, people the uh, sofa and the builder and the other one and then they're mocking meddle not don't meddle with them don't stay with them don't do what they're doing make sure that you identify yourself and you separate yourself and you say, I will not be like them. I will not meddle with them. Give me a good amen. amen. It says in the verse 3, allow me to speak. What is it you are talking, talking, talking? Allow me to speak. And then it says, after that I have spoken, it's telling us, mingle not. Don't mingle with the people. Don't stay in their company and don't abide with them. If you're going to have a 2020 confirmation, and if the blessing of God is going to multiply, as I believe in your life, this 2020, I believe that you will separate yourself from the mockers in Jesus' name. Suffer me that I may speak. And after that I have spoken, meditate more meditate more you see that that's that's a secret of a moving on the secret of a moving up and the secret of a moving forward you don't meddle with them you don't mock with them you don't mingle with them you meditate more on the word of god and that meditation will see you far ahead of all the mockers in Jesus' name. The message today, hearing diligently for a new breakthrough. Hearing diligently for a new breakthrough. Apart from what Job might say, we know what God himself has said. Apart from what Job might say, we know what Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, has said. And then we know the whole scripture, all the scripture of the promises of God, all the scriptures of the prophecy of God, all the scriptures of the precepts of God. We know what the Lord is telling us. He wants us to hear diligently for a new breakthrough. You'll have a breakthrough. 
uh, let, let's look at uh, Job chapter 42. In Job chapter 42, I'm reading here from verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. You see, even he himself, Job, made correction. And he made confession. And he said, I have uttered, I have spoken that, I understood not. I tried to reply those people and pay them in their coin. They threw something at me and I wanted to throw something back to them. And in trying to get even, in trying to throw something back to them, I uttered that, I understood not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me, I have heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye sees thee. Wherefore, wherefore I abhor myself, I repent in dust and ashes. Job said, there are things I said, oh God, about you, and I thought you were my problem, and I said you were pressing me, and I said you did this and you did that. Lord, I abhor myself. I repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee. My wrath is kindled against thee. Don't mock like they mock. Don't go with them. Don't meddle with them. And don't say what they said. And don't apply that to yourself. Because God said, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a bunch of rain. And my servant Job, my servant Job, after Job had confessed, after Job had repented, after Job now called upon the Lord, I got said, Job is my servant. What do you understand by that? God went back to chapter 1 when he told Satan, have you considered my servant Job with that confession, with that correction, with that repentance, with that restoration, he attained the position he had at the beginning. Whatever good thing you had at the beginning, you'll go back there in Jesus' name. It says, uh, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. Remember once again, move on, move on, move forward, don't meddle with them, don't mingle with them, don't mock like they mock, meditate more. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shohite, and Sophar, the near Masite, were, uh, they went and they did according as the Lord has commanded them. They too, they repented. If uh, you've gone the wrong way, you will repent in Jesus' name. And the Lord accepted Job. Everyone who repents, everyone who is restored, everyone that comes back to God and said, in the past year, I said that, I did that, I went that way, but it was not right. The Lord will accept everyone in Jesus' name. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Can God do that again? 
in your life can god do that again in your family can god do that again hacking diligently for a new breakthrough for a new breakthrough three things we're looking at number one the blessedness of diligently hearing god's word the blessedness of diligently hearing god's word not just job's words but the word of god it might come through job might come through moses might come through daniel might come through david might come through paul might come through peter or john the word of god the blessedness of diligently hearing god's word point number two the bitterness of deliberately hurting with grievous wickedness grievous wickedness all these three friends they hurt job they harmed job they hindered job they didn't allow him to even breathe and they put pressure 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 on him and the lord eventually said i'm not happy with you because you've not said the right thing you're trying to comfort job but you confused him you're trying to comfort job but you actually oppressed him the bitterness of deliberately hurting others with grievous wickedness point number three the breakthrough somebody is going to have a breakthrough today the breakthrough in diligently heeding the given word he has given us the word and we diligently heed we diligently obey we diligently comp comply with the word that he has given us the breakthrough in diligently heeding the given word we're coming back to point number one point number one the blessedness of diligently hearing God's word. We're looking at Job chapter 21, verse 2. Hear diligently my speech. Hear diligently the word God has put in my mouth. And let this be your consolation. Let this be your compensation. Let this be your commendation. Let this be your confidence. And let this be the reward you're going to have diligently hurting. Look at what the Lord is telling us in Job again. In Job chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 17. Job chapter 13, verse 17. Hear diligently my speech. He told them before, and my declaration with your ears. I'm going to declare the word of God, the total word of God, the complete word of God. And it says, I'll make the declaration here diligently. What are we going to have? What are we going to receive? What's the reward? What's the result? What's the blessedness if we diligently her king? And we diligently hear what the Lord is saying. Look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15. Reading from verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, they come through Moses to them may come through Joshua to them, may come through any of the servants of God to them, but if you will diligently hear her king to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, you will not just hear and forget, you will hear and practice, you will hear and do it, you will hear and act according to the word of God in Jesus' name. Look at what will follow. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. Egyptian sickness will not come upon you. The sickness of the world will not come upon you. 
and all the things you are reading about or learning about, look at what is rampant now. Look at what's happening now. Look at what's happening now. They will not happen in your life. I will not put, I will not permit these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am always, I am in January, I am in February, I am until December, I am all the days of this year, I am that I am, says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He didn't say good amen now. He says, healers, healers, healers. You will not even have to wait for a Thursday before you are healed. You will not wait for a Sunday before you are healed. The healing of the Lord and the healing virtue of Christ will keep on working in your life. Healers, healers, healers. He'll be healing you every time in Jesus' name. We're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know what the Lord is telling us? If we will diligently hearken and diligently hear, there's a blessedness that comes upon the people that diligently hear, hearken, and they do the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass in your life. And it shall come to pass in your family. And it shall come to pass this year, 2020, it must come to pass. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. You see that? You see that? The Lord doesn't taught us to just hear his word and pass it over our shoulder to another person. The Lord does not want us to hear his word and then just forget it the moment we hear it. It says, if you will hear diligently the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God. You are born again, the Lord thy God. You are a child of God, the Lord thy God. You have repented of your sin, the Lord thy God. You have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and your new creature is in Christ. The Lord thy God will set thee on high. Will set thee on high. I, you know, sometimes in the papers, I hear, I, I see the pictures of those students from college, university, or, you know, uh, high school, and uh, they show their pictures and they put their name, and uh, they say the fellow made first class, and that fellow is saying, yes, because I know when to play and when to walk, I know when to read and this and that, and then I made up my mind, but I say, I'm going to find the names, more of the names of our own children. Children, of our own youths, of our own campus students, of our little, little ones in Jesus' name, the Lord will set our children on high. The Lord will set our youths on high. And whatever you do will be blessed in Jesus' name. What you read, you will understand. And of course, uh, daddies and mommies and us uh, adults, the Lord will set you on high. And it says above all the nations of the earth, your work will prosper. Your life will prosper. Your profession will prosper. All these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. If thou shalt hearken, look at that, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. All your children and grandchildren, they will do well. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, blessing inside your home. 
you will not say this place where God is place where rented is not suitable. The blessing of God will wipe away every power of darkness there in Jesus' name. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. In the land which the Lord has given thee, the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. They shall be afraid of thee. You will not be afraid of them. Uh, you know, the person ought to go to the market. Why have you not gone to the market? Those market people, they say, I shouldn't sell there because I didn't contribute money for this or that. And I'm afraid of them. 2020 turn around. They shall be afraid of thee. Well, you're not going to, you know, take the form. The forms are out. Well, I'm afraid of all those people because when you get there, bring this, bring this, bring that, the table is going to turn around this year. You will not be afraid of them. They will be afraid of thee in Jesus' name. You will not be afraid of enemies. Enemies will be afraid of you. Canaanites and Jebusites will be afraid of you in Jesus' name. Hacking diligently and let this be your consideration. Hacking diligently and let this be your confirmation. Hacking diligently and let this be your confession. Look at verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. No lack in your life. In the fruit of thy body, no barrenness in your family. And in the fruit of thy cattle, even your poultry farm will show that this is a new year in Jesus' name. And your cattle and everything you rear, everything will just be multiplying this year. And all the, you know, sicknesses uh, that, you know, this one is uh, dead and this one is having disease. And you have to separate this one called the veterinary doctor this year. All those sicknesses that uh, deplete your cattle and your whatever, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. And the fruit of thy ground, all the pests will get off your farm in Jesus' name. In the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give them, the Lord shall open to thee his good treasure. Heaven to give you rain in thy, unto thy land in a season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And to bless all the work of your hand. Make it personal. And to bless all the work of my hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The money you have borrowed that is causing problem, the Lord will provide miraculously for you. You will pay your debt. And then after that, you will not be the borrower, you will be the lender in Jesus' name. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. Above only. Not up, down, up, down, above, above, above. Above only, accept it, it's yours. 
I can diligently and let that be your confidence this year. The Lord will provide for you. And ye shall be above only, and ye shall not be beneath. I didn't hear your amen. If that thou hearken, hearken diligently unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left hand to go after other gods to serve them. You will not worship strange gods. You will abide in the word of God all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, we're reading from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, we're reading from verse 20. Tells us in verse 20, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Every part of your body will experience the health of the Lord in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Health life you'll be vibrant and the word of god will bring healing and health in your body in jesus name but it says keep them in the midst of thine heart keep them keep thine heart with all diligence for out of feet are the issues of life put away from thee a forward mouth a perverse leap and put away from thee let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids um, look straight before thee ponder thou the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established turn not to the right hand or to the left remove thy foot from evil blessedness will be the mark of your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 2. Wherefore do ye spend your money for that which is not bread, or, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hacking diligently unto me. Those are the words again. Hacking diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good. You will not know famine in your family. You will not know scarcity in your family. You will not know poverty in your family. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live. You will not backslide. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. That's the blessedness. But now let's go back to Job. We're reading from chapter 20 now. Point number two. We're looking at the bitterness of deliberately hurting others with grievous words. Grievous wickedness. Look at Job chapter 20. And let's see the bitterness of such a life. In chapter 20 verse 5. Chapter 20 verse 5 that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite for a moment though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds yet he shall perish forever like his own dog and that which he has seen has seen him they'll say where is he the people who are wicked, 
and they take joy and delight in hurting others, in bringing others down, and they are running after the righteous, not to encourage the righteous to move forward, but for the righteous to be discouraged and then to go down. Instead of the righteous going down, the righteous will be going up. Who is the righteous person? A child of God. Thank God, the grace of God will make us righteous fully in Jesus' name. And for those, uh, you know, who are trying to put the righteous down, those wicked people, their rejoicing uh, will be short, will be brief. And then uh, they'll be surprised at what will happen unto them. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, the wickedness be sweet in his mouth though he hides each under his tongue there are some people they think that uh, wickedness is funny wickedness is sweet and wickedness is something they delight in when they see other people cry when they see other people down when they see other people uh, discouraged then they are very very happy it says though he spare each and forsake it not but keep it still within his mouth Yet his meat in his boil is turned, and it is the gall of us within him. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. You know, sometimes the society in which we live, you see, I'm living right, I will not cut corners, I will not gamble, I will not do anything evil, I will not steal. And it looks, yes, I'm making progress, but the progress is appearing slow. Don't worry about that, I don't have time to calculate with you the compound interest that comes in your life. You see, when, even if it's an increase of a 10%, another 10% of the total, another 10% of the total net, another 10%, you see, that compound interest, before you know what, you have double than what you had before. You have triple of what you had before. But the other one who will not work, who does not want that, has low interest and compound interest, and he wants to grab this and steal this and steal that, everything that he has swollen, he will vomit back. You don't want them to vomit? I said everything they have swollen, stolen, they will vomit back. It says in verse 16, he shall suck the poison of asp. And viper's tongue shall slay him. It's a terrible thing for the wicked who want to get rich quick. Look at verse 29. This is the portion of a wicked man from God. Punishment, perdition, suffering. This is the portion of a wicked man from God and the heritage appointed unto him by God. I will not be there. I will not be among them. I will not be like them. Are you like them? Look at the way you are talking. Chapter 21, Job chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 16. Lo, the good is not in their hand. They think I'm the master of my faith, I'm the captain of my soul. But no, those wicked people, the good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and, have, and how oft comes the destruction upon them? God distributed sorrows in his anger. He is angry with the wicked, and therefore he distributes sorrow unto them. Look at verse 30, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. Look at that. If somebody is wicked, and he will not repent, and he is saying that, well, after all, God is not doing anything. After all, I'm wicked. I'm getting away free with it. No. The wicked will not go scot-free because the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. I will not be part of them. In Job chapter 4, Job chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 8. 
Job chapter 4, reading from verse 8. Also, he gave him Job chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 8. Job chapter 4. I'm still searching for it, search for it too. Job chapter 4, reading from verse 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Don't worry, it is not the day that a farmer sows the seed that he will reap. And therefore, when people do wicked things, and they have done wicked things only yesterday, and then today, but they say, but look at me now, I'm still all right. Look at me now, I'm still moving on. Uh-uh, the harvest day is coming, and the reaping time is coming. Look at that passage. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, and they sow wickedness, they reap the same. Verse 9, by the blast of God, they perish. Wicked people, or repentant people, sinful people, backsliding people, who remain in their backsliding. It says, by the blast of God, they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils, they are consumed. I pray none of us will remain wicked. I will not be wicked. I will not do evil. This repentance and this regeneration, God forgives and then he wipes away what was done in the past. But if the wicked remains in wickedness, it says the blast of the Lord and the judgment of the Lord will come upon him. Look at chapter 8, Job chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 20. Job chapter 8, verse 20, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man. God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers. Neither will he help the evildoers till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy leaves with rejoicing. They that, have, they that hate thee shall be closed or shame. The wicked that hates the righteous, the wicked that oppose the righteous, the wicked that downgrade the righteous, the wicked that want to oppress and they want to bulldoze their way through so that they can have all the things of the world all to themselves. They that hate thee shall be closed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. It's a matter, it's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. The people who are wicked and they think, I'm getting on, I'm getting this, I'm getting that. The dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. See another amen there. Yeah. Chapter 11, verse 13. Chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 13. If thou prepare thine heart, and stretch out thine hands toward him. If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. In this new year, come to the Lord and make up your mind. You are going to live not in wickedness anymore, not in iniquity anymore, not in transgression anymore. If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. Let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. Let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. Why? Look at verse 20. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail. The eyes of the wicked shall fail. And there will be nobody to lift him up because he has not repented. And they shall not escape and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. Their hope as the giving up of the ghost. That means their hope will die. The hope of the wicked will die. The expectation of the wicked will die. That's why you don't want to mingle with them. You don't want to be part of the middle of them. And you don't want to be a mocker like they are mockers. Chapter 22, Job chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 15. Job chapter 22, verse 15. As thou march 
the old way which the wicked men have trodden? Have you marked the old ways which the wicked men have trodden? Have you followed their case history? Have you seen the way they live? And even though it appears they are now up, but keep on marking them, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overthrown, was a flood, which said unto God, depart from us. Instead of coming to God, he said, no, we don't want anything about God. We don't want his law. We don't want his word. We don't want his grace. We don't want his salvation. We don't want his precept, which said unto God, depart from us. And what can the Almighty do for them? That was their attitude. That will not be your attitude. Wicked people, they push God away and they disdain the word of God and they discredit the word of God and they disbelieve the word of God I will not be like that Job chapter 27 I'm reading from verse 8 Job chapter 27 reading from verse 8 for what is the hope of the hypocrite though he has gained when God taketh away his soul God is watching. They don't, they don't know God is there. They think they are all in all in the world, the wicked people. But what's their hope? When God says it's enough, enough wickedness, enough evil, enough transgression, enough sinfulness, and take it away their soul. Well, God hears cry. When trouble comes upon him, will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? Then he goes on to say, I will teach you. By the hand of God, that, that which is with the Almighty, will I not conceal? Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of, the, of a wicked man with God. The portion of a wicked man with God. What's their portion? Judgment. What's their portion? Wrath. What's their portion? Um, indignity. What's their portion? It's going to be everlasting punishment. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, 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 which they shall receive of the Almighty. I pray you'll not be an oppressor. You'll not be a wicked man. You'll not be a wicked woman. You'll be a child of God, righteous, holy, pure. You will turn around and you will not go the way of wickedness in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20 there. Verse 20 terrors shall hold on him as waters a tempest chillest him away in the night look at chapter 31 job 31 i'm reading from verse 3 it's not destruction to the wicked it's not destruction to the wicked it cannot be so clever more than god he cannot be so crafty, and then he will escape the judgment of God. It's not destruction to the wicked, and it's strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. It's strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. Look at chapter 38, Job, chapter 38. And I'm reading here from verse 1. Job 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Here is God talking now. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, as thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and that the wicked might be shaken out of it. That's God talking. That's God talking. That God will shake away 
will shake out all the wicked from the new heaven and the new earth. Look at verse 14. It is turned as clay to the seal, and this turned as a garment, and from the wicked their light is withholding, and the, high, and the high arm shall be broken. The arm of the wicked shall be broken. Look at Psalm 7. Psalm 7. I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 7. We're reading from verse 11. The word of God doesn't say anything good about the wicked. God does not plan anything good for the wicked until they repent until they turn, until they have uh, a change of heart, and now they go in the right direction. J uh, Psalm uh, 7 verse 11, God judges the righteous. God examines the righteous, and God upholds the righteous, and God is angry or the wicked, tell me. God is angry with the wicked. Tell me every day, all through the day, all through the week, all through the month. And if he dies in his condition of wickedness, he goes to hell. Why? Because God is angry with the wicked every day. And even if the wicked man dies on Sunday, God is angry with him on Sunday. And he goes to hell. If a wicked man dies in church, because God is angry with him every day, he goes from church and goes to hell. God is angry with the wicked every day. When he laughs, God is angry with him. When he eats, God is angry with him. When it appears, I don't care what will happen. I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm on top of the world. God is angry with him. I pray God will not be angry with you. And we're looking at Psalm 9, Psalm 9, verse 17. Psalm 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And when we talk of wickedness, there are people who are privately wicked to their wives. Wicked. They're religious. They go to church. You know, sometimes you read in the papers some of the atrocities that religious people commit. And you cannot commit those atrocities without being wicked. And such people, it says the wicked, they may come up with the name of a church. They may come up with the name of being a pastor. They may come up with the name of being you know, a dignitary. But the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Bitterness in the end. Bitterness all through eternity for those who are wicked and they hurt other people with a grievous wickedness. Let's come out of that and come to point number three now. The breakthrough. I said the breakthrough. In diligently heeding the giving of word. He has given us the word and we're going to have a breakthrough. I'm looking at your brother there, breakthrough for you. Sister there, breakthrough for you. And all our people all on social media, you are hearing the word and your eyes are glued on the screen and you say, this is great and this is for me. Breakthrough for every one of you this year in Jesus' name. We're looking at Joshua, Joshua chapter 22. Joshua chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 4. And now the Lord your God, these are children of God, now the Lord your God has given rest unto your brethren. As see as promised them, therefore now return ye and get you unto your tents. Go back home with expectation. And unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side, Jordan, take diligent heed. You see that? Heed the word of God. 
Obey the word of God. Observe the word of God. Practice the word of God. Don't hear and forget. Don't hear and leave it here. Take it home with you. Take the word of God with you everywhere you go. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charge you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua bless them. So the Lord bless you. So I bless you too. And the blessing of the Lord come upon your life in Jesus' name chapter 23 Joshua chapter 23 and I'm reading from verse 10 Joshua chapter 23 verse 10 one man of you shall chase a thousand just one man I want one man there to stand up only one just one just one one man of you shall chase a thousand God bless you, you can sit down any sister there, just one. Any sister there, just one. One woman of you shall chase a thousand. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. You can sit down, but a thousand words. Because we're no more fighting the Canaanites. We're no more fighting the Hittites. We're no more fighting the Jebusites. And so we cannot say now, we will chase a thousand Canaanites, but you will chase a thousand sicknesses, a thousand calamities, a thousand evil, a thousand defeat, a thousand failure. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you. And he as he has promised. He is it that fighteth for you as he has promised. It will be done. I said it will be done. But then you must take care how you hear the word of God. As you hear the word of God and you joyfully receive that, joyfully embrace that, and you are holding on to it, every promise of God will be yes and amen in your life this year in Jesus' name. Look at Acts, Acts chapter 8, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, and here we're reading from verse 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, Verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Have you ever thought of putting your name in the place of Philip? Because you see, Philip is going to heaven and now you are the one there. Put your name there. And then and then, and then, I go to the city and preach Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed, you see that, gave heed unto those things which Philip speak, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many and that, that were possessed with them, and many taking were possessed, and that were lame were healed. Healing for you. Yeah. Healing through you. Yeah. As you go by, everywhere you go in those communities, and you pray for people, and you preach to people, and you're preaching Christ unto them, there will be salvation for them. Yeah. There will be healing for them. There will be deliverance for them. Look at verse 8. And I was great joy. And I was great joy. And I was great joy. In that city. It, there is something. I need to show you this. You understand? That Philip was not an apostle. Was he an apostle? I said, was he an apostle? And yet, what the apostles did... 
God helped him and he did. Whatever your name, whatever your title, whatever your level, whatever your position, what we overseers do, what we superintendents do, you will do in Jesus' name. But you know something that even surprised me is that what did not even happen to any of those apostles happened unto Philip. Look at it now, and I'm reading to you from verse 39. From verse 39, that same chapter, and when they were come out of the water, when they were come out of the water, what do you see there? Tell me. Where are you? Talk now. The, fear, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. What does that mean? He was there physically. They came out of the water. And now it was in the desert. And remember that this person was the only one that had chariot. And the Lord said, join yourself to that chariot. So he joined himself to that chariot. And then he preached the word of God to him in the chariot. When he came to the water, then he was there and baptized him in the water. And the man now went his way with his chariot. And there is no chariot to take a Philip. And Philip will have to go from that desert place and walk and walk and walk until he gets to his city. And uh, the Holy Ghost said, no, you will not take all that trouble. And he caught him away and landed him in the appropriate place. God will catch you away from evil. When all those people are there and they want to, you know, we lay you on. They want to take away your life and there is no chariot and there is no car and there is no helper. The Holy Ghost will come upon you there and take you away from danger in Jesus' name. But that has not happened to any overseer. That has not happened to anybody here and all that. But you know, what did not happen to the, to the apostles will happen unto you. And it says, and the spirit of the Lord caught him with Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing, and Philip was found in Azotus, that he is the spirit of God took him to that new place, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Miraculous things happening to you this year miraculous deliverance happening to you this year miraculous provision happening to you this year joy in your heart joy in your family joy in your profession joy in your class joy in your exam joy for you all the way through in jesus name no impossibility this year no hindrance this year. No failure this year. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. New strength. New power. New courage. New ability new skill I everybody I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me say it confidently yourself let it get to the bottom of your heart He will strengthen you. He will empower you. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply 
all your need, my need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This 2020. This 2020. 2020 confirmation in your life. God will supply all, all, all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The tears of past years are wiped away. The sorrows of past years are taken away. The darkness of past years are taken away. Total, complete, abundant supply. This 2020 in your life in Jesus' name. Rise up and let there be a confirmation. Rise up and tell the Lord, there's going to be a confirmation in your life. Confirmation in your life. Confirmation in your life. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Diligently hear the word of God. Diligently hearken to the word of the Lord. And this will be your consolation. Your consolation. Your confirmation, your consecration, your confession will be your compensation. Consider it, it's your consideration. Now that you have heard the word of God, abide in that word of God and move on. Move on, don't look back. Move on, move up. This is your year. This is your time. Move up. Move forward. Mock not. Middle not. Mingle not. For the mockers. Mingle not with the wicked. Mingle not with evil doers. Mingle not with workers of iniquity. Hacking diligently. This is your life. This is your action. And the word of God. Hacking, hear, believe, embrace, do it, practice it. Don't throw the promises of God to other people. Take them, believe them, accept them. They're yours. You are, you are the blessed man of this year. The blessed woman this year. Act like that. Talk like that. Pray like that. Believe like that. Blessed. You are blessed. The spiritual blessings in high places, heavenly places. Blessed. Blessed in the city. Blessed on the way. Blessed in the house. Blessed in the church. Blessed. Blessed. I am the blessed man. I am the blessed woman. Tell the Lord. And he says, as you diligently hacking, as you diligently listen, 
à se diligently obey, à se diligently comply with the word of God. He says, I will not bring any of these diseases upon you, which have brought upon the Egyptians. He says, I am the Lord that healeth you. I am the Lord that secures you. I am the Lord that blesses you. Tell him, tell him, his promise will not fail. Tell him, his goodness will not fail. Tell him, I'm the Lord that saves you. I'm the Lord who sanctifies you. Tell him, accept it, believe it. Hold on to it. Hacking diligently, hacking diligently. That's the secret of blessing. That's the secret of your healing, your health, your deliverance. What I hear, I'll hold on to. What I hear, I'll embrace. What I hear, I believe. What I hear, I practice. And my life will be new. The life of a new creature. Life of obedience. Life of humility. Life of, life of honesty. Life of holiness. Stay on the word. Stand on the word. No compromise. No corruption. No transgression. No iniquity. Hacking diligently. Let it affect your thoughts. Affect your behavior. Affect your Christian experience. Think through your life at home. Live it by the word. Your life in the office. Live it by the word. Your life in the community. Live it by the word. Your life among believers, live that life according to the word. Your life is secret. When you think nobody is watching, your life far away from believers, live each by the word. Life of conviction. Life of consecration. Life of courage. Life of compassion. 
thoughtfulness. Live a life based on what you have diligently hacking done to. No carelessness, no corruption, no compromise, no evil, no carnality. Let wickedness be far away from you. Let unrighteousness be far away from you. Let defilement be far away from you. Unrepentant sinners have a bitter end. Unrepentant wicked people have a bitter end. Come out of the bitterness of the wicked. Commit yourself to the Lord this year. 2020 will be a year of obedience. A year of holiness, a year of honesty, a year of transparency, Let your salvation be sure. Let the Spirit of the Lord be a witness with your heart that you have repented, that you are a new creature in Christ, that true conversion has taken place. Let there be the evidence of the new life of the new creature. Evidence. The new creature. With a new covenant. With a new character. A new courage for righteousness. The indwelling of the Spirit can make you entirely new. New heart. New thoughts, new direction, new behavior, new love, love for God, new love for the Word of God. 
Nio. Recebo. Recebo. Don't only ask for material things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things shall be added unto you. Put yourself in the territory of breakthrough by having a new heart, a new mind, new dependence on God, new devotion to God, new consecration to God. new commitment to the Lord. And whatever He assigns you to do, don't shirk your responsibility this year. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things in ministry, I can. All things in my calling, I can. All things in my profession, I can. I can do all things. All things he appoints for me to do, I can. I can do all things. All things he challenges me to do, I can do all things. Make it a year of profitable activity, I can do all things. A year of progressive activity, I can do all things. A year of perfecting holiness and the fear of God, I can do all things. A year of preaching the gospel, I can do all things. Make it a year of progress. Moving up. Moving on. Moving forward. You can. You can. No weakness. No fainting. No fretting. Lay everything on the altar, consecrate everything for the good of the people of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he will provide for you. Supply all your spiritual needs. So you can reflect the life of genuine salvation. All personal needs. So you will not say, I'm not able. You're able. 
the God of divine ability will live in you and he'll supply all the strengths you need all the energy you need all the grace you need to go through any challenge of your life I can do all things through Christ my Savior through Christ my sanctifier through Christ my strengthener through Christ my shepherd through Christ my sanctifier I can I can do all things I can endure all things I can face all things I can achieve all things I can I can because it strengthens me by his grace you can by his spirit you can By faith, you can. By the greater one that lives in you, you can.
In Jesus' name we pray. 2020 congregation. What a 2020 covenant. And a 2020 confirmation. The Lord bless you. The Lord fulfill all his will in your life in Jesus' name. Everything he has declared, everything he has promised, everything in the covenant, everything that he has prepared for you this year, the Lord fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. You are hacking diligently. You will embrace the word diligently. You believe the word diligently. And you focus on the word in your life diligently in Jesus' name. The blessing of the righteous for you. The breakthrough of the restored for you. And the bitterness of the wicked away from your life in Jesus' name. This year indeed. And this year in truth. Will be the 2020 as the Lord has promised every one of us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you are going to do. Thank you, Lord, for this year. It's going to be a great, glorious year for every one of us in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that everything you've spoken to us directly, everything you've spoken to us personally, everything you've revealed to us in your word will abide by your word in Jesus' name. All forms of wickedness, in secret, in the public, in the private, anywhere, we pray you cleanse away from every heart in Jesus' name. You have reminded us that you are God and you change not. And your words cannot change. There is no peace for the wicked. You don't have any pleasure in the wicked. There's no goodness for the wicked. But there's punishment, there's perdition for the wicked here on earth and far away in eternity for all eternity. We're asking, O oh Lord, all those who have repented, all those who have turned from wickedness and iniquity, they will not return back there in Jesus' name. Real biblical salvation, real genuine salvation, real forgiveness, real freedom, Real cleansing from all wickedness and iniquity grant to everyone in Jesus' name. And as we hear your word and we take in the promises and we take in all the things you have told us we are going to do and we keep on meditating on them and we keep on believing, embracing them, and we keep on holding on to them, not looking away from your word. We pray that the blessedness of obedience will come to every life in Jesus' name. When temptations come to disregard your word, when temptations come to overlook your word, when temptations come to belittle your word, Give us the grace to be overcomers in Jesus' name. Darkness will not overcome us. Disobedience will not overcome us. Demons will not overcome us. The world will not overcome us. This word you have given us and we have diligently hearkened will also 
devotedly obey all the days of our lives in Jesus name ours will be the blessing Lord I pray blessings internal blessings external blessings domestic blessings professional blessings ministerial shower upon everyone in Jesus name Lord we pray no beat or iota or blessing will be left out in any of our lives in Jesus name as we go out blessing on the road blessing in the home blessing in the church blessing with believers blessing in the midst of unbelievers blessing everything you have declared will be in our lives all through this year in Jesus name confirm your word confirm the blessing confirm the success confirm the breakthrough Lord I pray reproduction will be in every family I will pray Lord this year 2020 there will be a confirmation of the everlasting covenant in every one of our lives as we go home now go with us and all our people all over that we are connected together go with everyone back home all our media people who are watching over the media I pray Lord your blessings will multiply in their lives too testimonies in every mouth the joy of the Lord in every life and the strength of the Almighty in every life confirm it Lord for everyone in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.